This week we had the worst electrical blackout in European history. And for us at Biotonomy, this is not a surprise. See, we've been traveling all over the world, building autonomous buildings for the past 15 years, and we've been seeing what happens when our infrastructure collapses. And unfortunately, most people in Europe have lived with this mind state that the infrastructure is very reliable. But because I've personally seen what happens when infrastructure collapse around the world, I've always understood that this is a very serious problem. And I actually was in Madrid when this happened. I was in the city center of Madrid. I was on my way. Uh, I just arrived to a meeting with the investor to actually ask for uh, investment for building uh, uh, urbanization of autonomous building. This is a project we're working on. And it was funny that exactly in that moment that we stepped in uh, to have this meeting, the electricity goes off and there's a, within just seconds, chaos everywhere. The entire office that we were inside were basically panicking because it was lunchtime and there was no electricity, which means they had no food. And we had our meetings and, and after our meeting, we couldn't uh, get out uh, back into um, our hotel because the roads were completely blocked, all the cars uh, were blocked because the traffic lights went out so there was no traffic management uh, all the gas stations stopped working because no cars could be pumped with uh, fuel and uh, basically everyone had to stop working and it was a big chaos just within seconds there was people all over the street because the trains were, were not working, the subways were not working. So all the people went on the streets and obviously our infrastructure is not built for that. And it was very interesting to see uh, people's reaction. Actually, it didn't take much time until um, people started literally freaking out uh, and, and really questioning, you know, how how am I going to get home? And when I come home, uh, what do I do? Because there's no water. Well, what am I going to do for dinner tonight? So people rushed into the uh, grocery stores and, and, and panicked and were buying all the water and all the food. Like the shelves were completely empty in the grocery stores. So we're speaking almost two hours in of this blackout and all the shelves in the grocery stores were empty. This lasted for almost 12 hours and fortunately it came back and, and people were able to get to their homes. But imagine what happens when this lasts longer, when it's not just a day, but a week. Imagine what happens when it's a month or a year. This is actually the reality of a lot of people. You know, most of us live in our houses very comfortable thinking that when you open the faucet, there's always water. When you turn off the heating, there's always going to be heating. But that's not the case anymore. You know, things are really changing. You have to understand that our infrastructure was built a long time ago when we had little understanding about the global challenges of today. I'm talking about the environmental challenges we're, we're seeing with climate, the severe, extreme, severe weather events with droughts, with heat waves and the floods. All of these basically breaks the infrastructure. Our system is not built to cope with floods with storms, with heat waves. And we keep building the same way over and over like nothing has happened. And this is scary, really. 
I've really seen in different parts of the world what happened to people when the infrastructure is collapsing for a longer period of time. And this is also now becoming a reality in Europe, in, in Americas, in all over the world. It's becoming a daily reality. Yet we keep doing the same thing over and over, building conventional buildings that rely on centralized system. See, the, 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 the overall problem is that centralized systems are very vulnerable because when we are all, when millions and millions of people are relying on one system, when that system breaks, we're all in trouble. We're all stuck in our homes without heating, without cooling, without water. You cannot even use your toilet. That's how bad it gets. You cannot take a shower. You cannot cook food. So this is really serious. And I've been seeing this problem just growing more and more. This is why we are pushing so hard for building autonomous buildings. This is for our own survival. We have to do this. If we want to continue thriving and surviving on this planet, we really need autonomous buildings. And not only the fact that it, it makes us independent and resilient when, when the infrastructure collapsed, but it also saves us a lot of money. Our buildings today, we are paying for energy. We are paying for water. We are paying for our sanitation system. They cost us so much money, but none of them come with a guarantee. None of them come with a security. When a blackout happens, when the water infrastructure breaks, no one owes you anything. You will basically just be stuck in your home with your family without your basic necessities. So why keep building a life that we know doesn't work? You know, all it takes is one event and you and your family can be in big problem. So why not build your life in a way that is resilient, that in the future, no matter what happens, if it's a war, if it's a global conflict, it's a storm, even if all the infrastructure of the city break, you always know that in your home, you will have comfort. Your building will always have comfortable temperatures inside. Your building will always provide you and your family with fresh, clean, drinkable water. Your building would produce its own fruits and vegetables and provide you with food even when grocery stores are being emptied. This will bring you peace. Peace of mind. Knowing that no matter what happens in the world, you have the control.